Here is some simple math to help you understand what's going on with the music. This is a G major bar chord on the third fret. The G note is 98 cycles per second there, and five letter names above that, G, A, B, C, D. The D note is 147 cycles per second. So dividing the higher frequency by the lower frequency, you get about 1.5. That's the 3 to 2 ratio. That's the perfect fifth interval. And the frequency of the high note divided by the low note equals the interval. That's the math. And that holds for all intervals, semitones, perfect fifths, octaves, compound intervals, and everything in between. Why is that, Bob? And uh, the answer is because that's the way the inner ear is uh, programmed to understand and interpret sound. I go into some detail in the uh, sound and air videos. But basically, that shape under the graph represents the basilar membrane. And it's only 30 millimeters long and has to analyze and interpret sound waves up to 17 meters long. So it compresses sound in a generally logarithmic or exponential way. If you know one note and the interval, you can figure out what the next note is going to be. We do this kind of thing all the time. We're always trying to make sense out of what's going on around us based on past experience and current experience. And we're always making a guess as to what's going to happen next. The intervals are played in patterns, either in sequence, as in scales and melody, or at the same time, as in chord progressions. Now, rhythm, beat, lyrics, etc., they all have patterns the audience can identify with as well. But the intervals can be readily seen as mathematical formula, and that may be worth knowing. Here are the just or natural intervals, which are derived from the way objects like strings and soundboards naturally vibrate. You can get some more detail at the uh, fret and interval video at uh, about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So far, most guitarists are not that interested in uh, that kind of detail. Now, what I have found useful, and this is not so much for playing music, but for understanding what is going on. The intervals in this music are subdivisions of the octave, or 2 to 1 ratio. And when two of them on the same level are multiplied, and that is three notes, they equal the next highest interval ratio. Uh, this kind of simple math is what the audience anticipates. And it can be combined in complex ways, and sometimes too complex. When you lose the audience, and it's usually at the same time you get ahead of yourself, Knowledge of music theory helps you find out where you are, and you can go back and pick up the audience where you left them, and continue on. Skip a beat, maybe. They won't even notice. Uh, music theory is a kind of um, musician's shorthand for the math, but it works a lot better than pulling out a calculator when you're on stage. And none of the number ratios after 2 to 1 are even ratios. There's no natural equal division of the octave other than the octave itself. It's 2 to 1 one half, etc. And I give some detail in the fret and interval video at about starting at about one minute and ten seconds. But there's a lot of math in that thing. A lot of guitarists don't want it. And now you can understand music as a mathematical formula if you are a robot or something like that. Uh, by and large if you're on stage you want to uh, maybe uh, use music theory terminology. I was listening to Rick Beato the other day. He said uh, one of his commentators there said, uh, why are you using this uh, algebra? And that's not a bad idea for what music theory is. It's kind of algebra for the math. Uh, but it's something you have to use uh, in order to understand. For me, at this point in my uh, musical career, I think of them as patterns. And uh, too many old patterns are going to be boring, and too many new ones are going to be frustrating. And that applies both to the audience and to the guitarist. Here are three different ways of thinking about that G major bar chord. The finger pattern, in which you place your fingers to create the chord. The uh, scale degrees and letter names. And the uh, frequencies, which the uh, scale degrees consist of. And that gives you the mathematical formula we just talked about. Down below you got an illustration of the fretboard there in the letter name. And here are the frequencies on the fretboard, so you can see they're basically interchangeable one to the other. 
Taking a closer look at the equal tempered ratios that are actually used on the guitar, they are shown here as approximations. Uh, and that is what the squiggly equal sign means. I use it a lot uh, for convenience. And honestly, uh, music uses a lot as well. Now, all the intervals are related to each other by the 12th root of 2 in equal temperament. Uh, let me show you that on the calculator. Okay, so here it is on the calculator. I put the, put the whole thing up there. And you get 2 to the 1 12th equals the semitone, 1.059, etc., etc., about 1.06. And that's it. If you multiply that times, say, a, uh, oh, a perfect fifth of 2 to the 7th 12th, all you got to do is add 2 to the 1 12th and 2 to the uh, 7 12th, it's 8 twelfths. And this is a, a good image to make a point about the math. If I press the equal key on the calculator, it produces the same answer every time, and it takes all the mystery out of what's going on. The arts, music included, put mystery, suspense, all the drama and all the emotions it can into performance. There are two different objectives. What an interval is in a math formula is different from what it means in music theory. And whether it's a good interval or not depends on what kind of music you're playing and what kind of audience you've got. Now you can see here with those little uh, squiggly equal signs that the equal tempered intervals approximate the just or natural intervals. Let's see what that does for us. Now equal temperament, because it approximates just intonation, allows you to think of the same physical scale in terms of both harmonic and equal division at the same time. That gives you a lot of room to uh, move notes around. And again, the harmonic system is the natural subdivision of the uh, vibrating object. And the equal division is the uh, root system of uh, dividing the octave up into equally spaced intervals, or intervals that sound equally spaced. And down below there, uh, Marburg's uh, argument back in 1776 is the reason I would like to stick with equal temperament on my guitar. There's countless types of unequal temperament, and uh, everyone declares his own the best, and that's pretty much what I see on the internet. Uh, but why equal temperament? Well, it's uh, a lot easier to see on the piano keyboard, uh, which covers pretty much the complete range of frequencies used in music, and the circle of fifths, which summarizes some of the key relations in the music. The circle is unraveled and laid out horizontally in a line. The perfect fifth interval is a ratio of 3 to 2. The frequency of each note is multiplied by that 3 to 2 to get the frequency of the next note. The notes are highlighted here on the piano keyboard. And the same thing is done with the octave ratio. Both progressions end on the same key, but the math shows a different frequency for each. Here's the math. 2 over 1 to the 7th power equals 128. Multiplied times the starting frequency of 32.7 on that starting C note. And you get 4186. 3 to 2 to the 12th power equals 129.7. Multiplied by 32.7, you get 42.42. Now, each piano key can only play one frequency. The solution here, it's used on the guitar as well, is called 12-tone equal temperament, and the ratio of the difference is approximately 1.014, according to Wikipedia. There's a, there's a few little uh, differences there. And that's the Pythagorean comma. Music theory is full of commas and lemas, and they all have to do with intervals that don't quite fit together the way we think they should. The mathematical reason they don't fit here is that 2 and 3 are prime numbers divisible only by themselves and 1. So there's no combination of perfect fifths that would fit exactly into any combination of octaves. Because of that, if you ascend by perfect fifths along the circle of fifths, you get a different set of frequencies for each note than if you descend by perfect fifths from the high note, which is seven octaves uh, above. And I work out how to bring all the notes from the circle of fifths uh, progressions into the single octave over on the 12-tone equal temperament video at about 55 seconds. 
And now singers and violinists make these kinds of adjustments during performance to keep closer to just or Pythagorean tuning, which sounds smoother depending on context. Uh, but since the frets of the guitar and the piano keys are fixed, they both play an equal temperament today. Singers and orchestral instruments make additional adjustments to stay in tune with them. When you use the uh, 2 to the 1 twelfth or the twelfth root of 2 as the semitone interval, 7 of those equals approximately a perfect fifth. It equals 1.498 versus 1 1.5 for the true or just perfect fifth. So now 2 to the 7 twelfth to the 12th power equals exactly 128, the same as 2 to the 7th power. And now the circle of fifths is complete. It's round. There's no extras, pluses, and minuses. The math again. Between any two notes, the interval ratio equals the frequency of the high note divided by the frequency of the low note. To get to the high note from the low note, you multiply the frequency of the low note by the interval ratio. To get from the higher note to the low note, you divide the frequency of the high note by the interval ratio. The math is a good background to understand the reasoning behind music theory, and it provides a way to check if you're using the right note when you have time to pull out your calculator. Music theory may sound like a kind of algebra, and maybe it is sometimes. But music has to be complex at times to keep the attention of the audience. Other times it needs to be simple to keep the attention of the audience. Music theory is applied on the job in real time while practicing and performing. It helps you to understand where you are and where you want to go to express whatever it is you want to express. And a calculator may help understand some of it, but not how to use it on stage. Here's an infographic that compares some of the historical temperaments and tunings. I'm not going to explain it. I don't want you to miss the enjoyment of figuring this out for yourself. And here's another chart I made up. You can, uh, you can copy any of these and use them for yourself. But sooner or later, you're going to have to make up some of your own and figure some of this out for yourself. Uh... It's just the way it is.